images of Robert the doll have been circulating on Twitter. I believe it first popped up on Facebook and there's been a lot of fear. I just see like black, like streak looking things going through it. It looks like claws. I kept feeling breathing like down my neck. Hi my angels, it's Haley Reese and I hope that you guys are having an absolutely fantastic morning, afternoon, night, whatever it is for you when today's video finally reaches you. You guys, today's video has been so highly requested as of recently. And that is because images of Robert the doll have been circulating on Twitter. I believe it first popped up on Facebook. And there's been a lot of fear being instilled into people who have came across these photos. And because back in 2017, I did a whole video on Robert the doll. So many of you guys were asking me if it's true that you can get cursed or haunted by simply seeing an image of Robert and if it truly is dangerous to stumble across him. So I plan on making this video yesterday. I actually wanted to sit down and film it and chat with you guys, kind of recap for those of you who might not have seen my last video on who Robert the doll is and really talk about from my personal research and experience whether or not I think he is dangerous just via seeing an image of him. But then I stumbled across some tweets from another YouTuber who I follow, Colin Barry. He does astrology videos, you guys. I will have them linked all down below because I will be sharing his experience later on, who claims that back when he did a video around the same time as me, he actually had a horrific negative experience with Robert the Doll, and he won't even speak the name of Robert the Doll. So for this video, I want to recap with you guys who Robert the Doll is, my personal experience, and share with you what the real dangers surrounding Robert are, but then I'm also going to share Colin's experience because he had a very different experience than myself and I kind of want to just warn you guys that whether or not you have a negative experience with an entity, they are real. They exist and Robert the Doll actually isn't something to be messed with. So for those of you who are familiar with my channel, you guys know that I am very familiarized with haunted dolls. I've done a whole series on haunted dolls all across the world and last year I actually met the real Annabelle doll in the Warren's Occult Museum which was a crazy experience. While I haven't personally met Robert the doll I have done an entire video on him I'm very familiar with him and I've always believed that Robert the doll is much like Annabelle and a very real doll. But with that being said the initial thing that's always been talked about with Robert was the fact that Robert requires, when you meet him, a real respect towards him. The museum that he resides in advises you to properly introduce yourself to Robert and to ask his permission to take a picture with him, which is different than other haunted dolls because I filmed with Annabelle, I took pictures with Annabelle, I took a picture with Annabelle, I put Annabelle, Annabelle, I took, eh, I put Annabelle in my vlog and I never had any negative experience with Annabelle in that regard. Although I will say, Annabelle really pulled me in, but that's a whole other story for a whole other time. So when I started hearing that people were claiming to be cursed or um, have horrific experiences by simply seeing a picture of him, it was very odd to me to be hearing that because unlike another haunted doll I've talked about named Peggy, like I said, I'd never heard of Robert cursing or haunting you through a picture. I've heard that he can curse and haunt you if you take a picture without his permission, but never what people are claiming as of right now. That would be Peggy the Haunted Doll who curses people via pictures and videos of her and haunts them and that is just, she's an unsettling doll. So before I get into like my experience and my true thoughts on this and Colin's experience with everything, I want to just very briefly break down the overall story of Robert the Doll and how Robert the Doll came to be. If you guys want a more in-detail version, I will link down my previous video in the description box and you guys can watch my video that I did back in 2017 on him, but I will give you a brief summary so you're kind of caught up to speed for those of you who are unfamiliar with him or why he's so haunted, and then we'll talk a little bit about what's been circulating online. So Robert the Doll is 
three feet tall, you guys. He is the size of a small child and he's over a hundred years old and currently resides in a museum in Key West, Florida. Basically, back in 1906, Robert the doll was gifted to a boy around four years old named Robert Eugene Otto. He was actually gifted to Robert Eugene Otto from a servant of the family who was said to practice in dark magic, witchcraft, and um, voodoo. Now it was rumored that the Otto family wasn't always the kindest to their servants and it was believed that a lot of the servants didn't enjoy working for them. And it was said that before Robert received this doll from the servant, she was caught by the mother practicing some sort of voodoo, witchcraft, something of that nature in the backyard and was fired immediately. But before leaving the family, she gifted Robert the doll to Robert Eugene Otto. Immediately, these two became inseparable and over time, it was kind of coming to light that maybe this wasn't a normal relationship between a child and a doll. Robert Eugene Otto stopped going by Robert and actually started going by Eugene because he claimed that Robert was the doll's name, not his. When strange things started happening around the house or even horrible things started happening around the house and the parents would ask Eugene where this was happening from or why this was happening suddenly, he would always say, Robert did it. It was Robert, and the blame was always being passed over to Robert. When his toys and bears and dolls would turn up mutilated and just destroyed, and his parents would ask why he was ruining his other toys, he would say, I didn't, Robert did it. Even more strange, the family would start to hear Eugene up in his room talking with an unidentifiable voice. They thought at one point, maybe their son was using two different voices to play with his toy, but then they started to realize that it was a voice that their son was incapable of making. So it was as though Robert actually was talking back to Eugene. People would hear the doll running around and giggling and neighborhood kids would even claim to see the doll in the window and move right before their very eyes. At one point, Robert the doll was taken by another family member and placed in her attic as they were trying to kind of separate Eugene and Robert from one another and allow Eugene to grow up. And she would suffer a stroke and die when she was otherwise healthy prior to receiving the doll. Eugene kept Robert the doll all the way into his adulthood and although he was no longer allowed to sleep in the bed with him because he had a wife now, which totally understandable, he made Robert the doll his own room entirely. And that was where he resided until Eugene would later pass away. Now plenty more would happen. Like I said, if you guys want more detail of what happened prior to him winding up in the museum, I will have my video linked down below. But eventually, Robert the doll made his way to a museum. Initially, they didn't know what the heck to make of this doll, but because Eugene had made quite a name for himself, they were excited to have his doll, and so they put it on display. But immediately, they would start to notice very strange things happening around this doll. When people would walk up close to the doll, their cell phones and their cameras would suddenly stop working. When they would walk away, though, it would all be fine. People would claim to see the doll's expression change whenever the doll got angry about what someone was saying, and eventually the museum would start receiving thousands of letters of people apologizing to Robert, begging the museum to read the letters to him because their lives had went horrible after they didn't ask permission to take his picture or they came into contact with him. Essentially, the museum would tell people to respect Robert and to go up to him and introduce themselves properly if they wanted to take a picture please ask his permission, just respect him for who he is. And there were non-believers who would taunt Robert and eventually wind up sending letters in saying that they should have never provoked or taunted him and that he was in fact evil. Nobody really knows why Robert the doll is so haunted or why this entity does what it does. Some believe that perhaps in spite of the family, the servant had done some sort of black magic or voodoo on this doll and gave it to their son as like a getting back at them type of thing. Others think that it was just a haunted doll from the beginning, and some think that through Eugene's love for this doll, he brought it to life in a way or brought a spirit or entity into it. But nobody knows why he's haunted. However, that's not what this video is about. What this video is about is the fact that people are confusing the story in a sense, or at least I thought so until I spoke to Colin. So basically, like I said, the biggest thing surrounding Robert is you want to be kind to him and you want to ask his permission for pictures and videos. So when I started hearing that there was 
all these different pictures circulating on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook claiming that if you see his picture, you must apologize immediately or suffer the consequences. I was pretty taken back because I'll let you guys know, I have looked at plenty of pictures of Robert the doll. I've looked at videos of Robert the doll and I've never had a negative experience. But with that being said, I've always known the power of Robert the doll. I don't question demonic entities or provoke them because I know their power. I don't need to ask a demon to show me what it can do because I know what a demon can do. So I'm always very, very respectful of entities, whether they're on my side of the fence or not. When it comes to anything that I'm researching, anywhere that I'm investigating, I don't provoke or push things past where I'm comfortable. So I'm not sure if that's why, but I've just never been afraid of seeing pictures of Robert the doll and I've never been afraid of clearly of saying his name. So I was very, very confused until I saw Cullen's tweets. Now, like I said, you guys, he also makes YouTube videos and he actually posted a YouTube video yesterday of his experience with Robert the doll. So I'll have that linked down below as well. But I saw his tweets and I'm going to read you a couple of them right now that I saw before making this video and then I eventually reached out to him. So he said, all I want to say is people think this doll is a joke. Stop it. I had a genuine effed up situation happen to me where I had to go live with my mom for two months because my apartment was taken over because I made a video about them and used their image without permission in the thumbnail. He said, don't say their name. Do not look at the pic if you can avoid it. I don't even want to give it thought, but I just need to warn y'all. Try your best to stay away from it at all costs. And then he said, by the way, I am making a video sharing my experience with this doll, but I will not use their name in the video. I refuse. I will not show their pic. They will be referred to as the Twitter doll, and that is it. Hopefully this video will make people stop playing around with the paranormal. So naturally, I wanted to include that in my video because it's a very different experience than the one that I've had. I made a video of Robert the doll in the past. Nothing negative came from it. But I decided to actually reach out to him and make sure he was cool with me including him in my video. And once I did, he was so on board with me spreading awareness of his horrible experience to warn others. And he even sent me some tweets from back when this actually happened when he initially made the Robert the Doll video. He said, my SD card snaps in half. My wallpaper is torn off the wall. My camera literally breaks. I hear breathing in the room and down my back. Not to be creepy or anything, but Robert the doll is haunting me and I don't know why I'm so casual about it. I'm writing a letter to him tonight and sending it to him because this has gone too far. I'm not even kidding, dude. And then he also tweeted, stay away from the paranormal stuff, kids. And it's his wall after what happened. So obviously that's very creepy stuff and that's a very big thing. And one thing that I want to let you guys know is when I was talking with him and we were messaging back and forth, he was so terrified. Like, he didn't even want to say the doll's name. He didn't know if he could make a video. Like he was just very uncomfortable and unsettled with what happened. And I want to insert some clips from his video telling you guys like what happened to him and how traumatic it was to him. I'm going to be very, very careful about how I make this video. I'm not going to mention the entity's name and I'm going to sage my house after I'm done making this. This particular entity does not like when you use their photos without their permission. And I did not know that before this, but let's get into what happened to me and let's get into why if you do see this stuff on Twitter, do not engage. I see the backdrop on the floor. So on the backdrop, I just see like black, like streak looking things going through it. It looks like claws. I'm gonna insert a picture right here. But then other stuff kept happening as well. And when I went to pull the SD card out of the camera, it was stuck. It basically shattered in my camera. And when I pulled it out, it basically broke my SD card slot. I kept feeling breathing like down my neck. And do you guys know how when somebody's in the corner of the room, you can feel their presence? Like even though you're not looking at them, like I could be looking straight at this camera, but like something could be in the corner and I'll, I'll be aware of it kind of. I would keep getting that feeling like somebody was watching me. Like I called my mom, I told her, please, can I come stay with you for a little bit? I'm like terrified I can't stay at this apartment anymore. Eventually, after him having to cleanse his space and his religious mother praying for him and everything that he did to not even think about Robert the Doll anymore, it eventually subsided and everything worked itself out for him. But he still has a very, very, very bad feeling around Robert the Doll and is convinced that because he made that video without his permission, he cursed slash haunted his life. 
So with that being said, with my personal experience and Colin Barry's personal experience, the biggest question that you guys might still be wondering is, will seeing a picture of Robert the doll curse or haunt you? In my personal experience, I would say no. My biggest thing that I always say is just protect your energy on a daily basis. If you see the picture of Robert the doll, acknowledge that that cannot harm you. Move on from it. Don't dwell on it. Don't seep into it. Don't mock it. Don't provoke it. Don't question it. Don't try to challenge it. But in my personal experience, Robert isn't like Peggy where he curses you. However, who knows why for some reason with Colin making that video, Robert did target him. It's like what I say when it comes to like Ouija boards and all these different paranormal games. A lot of people won't have negative experiences, but you don't want to be that one person who does. You could play with a Ouija board thousands of times and have positive experiences, but somebody out there could play with it the first time and have a really negative experience. When we're opening doors to the other side, we don't get to decide what comes through, even for myself included. So you need to always protect your energy. Anything to do with the paranormal can be dangerous, like I just said, but make sure that you protect your energy and you absolutely never provoke, challenge, or taunt a demonic entity or an entity for that matter. You really don't want to question the ability of something powerful. Tony Spira actually told me when I was in the Warren's Occult Museum, well, he didn't just tell me, but he was telling everybody that was there, how you don't get to call a demon and decide to pull it into your life. If I sat here right now and tried to provoke or invoke one, it could come today, it could come tomorrow, it could come a year from now. We don't get to decide things like that when we mess around with the paranormal. So just be really careful, you guys, but in my personal opinion, Robert the doll will not curse you just by looking at a picture of him, but he is a very real entity and you never know what could happen. Here, Colin Barry's warning on that. The unfortunate thing about this, you guys, is so many, especially on Twitter, of the tweets and retweets are accounts trying to get attention. For an example, this is Robert the doll. He's an evil entity. You just saw his picture. Retweet this and apologize so you don't get cursed. And it's like, yes, you're getting attention from it, but at the end of the day, this is a real entity. This is a real entity who may not like you using him in that manner. So it's disheartening, nonetheless, to just see people taking the story of a haunted doll, a real entity that has, by the many, many, many stories that have surfaced online, cursed and messed with people's lives, to see it as like a viral tweet trying to scare people. So guys, don't be afraid. Protect your energy. Remember that you are a spiritual being having an earthly experience and you are so much more powerful than you could even believe. And that is my overall thoughts for all of you who have been asking me. With that being said, I love talking about haunted dolls. They super freak me out. Like I always tell you guys, there's something about possessed kids and haunted dolls that freaks me out. But I am going to be looking into some more haunted dolls because I love sharing them with you guys. And I really hope that you guys enjoyed today's video. If you guys have any other questions, you can comment them down below and I'll be responding to as many as them, as many of them as I can. I just want to say that I am not an expert in anything by any means. I'm solely sharing my personal experiences and I wanted to include another experience that was different than mine because like I said, no two people are going to have the exact same experience. So that is it for today's video. If you guys are new to my channel or you are just not yet subscribed but you do enjoy my videos, I would super love and appreciate it if you would click that subscribe button. Join the Reese's Pieces. We would love nothing more than to have you here. And please give this video a big thumbs up if you did enjoy it. Remember my loves, do all things with kindness. And until next time, I love you.